This is what it's like if I sit next to you. But if I sit way back, we actually look the same size. Mm, no, I look kind of like bigger. It's the lens. <laughs> All right, day five reflections, which was yesterday. Okay. So, last time we left off, we had made it here and it was peak training day. I kind of like teasered that a little bit. Uh -huh. um, so let's start about this, let's like talk about stats. It's one of the larger ones you guys have done, right? Yeah, I think there was at least 70 people. Yeah, I counted um, 72. Um, Dixon usually gets about 100 or so. We've had ones like that where if they're they're either like real big. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we'll have ones that are like 50, and then most often we're only getting like 20 to 30. Yeah. When we're in like kind of random places. Yeah. So it was a packed house. Um, the organization of it all was like flawless from yeah, what I saw. Brilliant. Yeah. Executed perfectly. Daniela um, did fantastic, and her team did. So. Yeah, it was essentially sponsored by her, right? Yep. She was the host. Yep. Um, okay, so that was the majority of day one, just capturing and documenting well, some of that. Five. Or day five, sorry. Day one of the peak. Yeah, day one of peak. Um, but then at the end, there was... Oh, how was the translation piece? The translation went well. It definitely makes it take longer, though. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of shift things around a bit. It kind of helped me reflect a little bit on what is the most important, which is helpful because I'll be creating the online training soon. So okay. knowing like what to make sure to have in there versus not, because if I could cut it out, yeah, you know, it's like a supplementary thing that could be helpful, but it really helped me sort of hone in on like, yeah. what are the really big take home points? Nice. Cause you know, I like to talk a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Less soap boxes. <laughs> so that was, up until like five o'clock and then there was a round table discussion sort of thing to where um, I started off with a couple questions just trying to get an idea of you know where are people working why do they show up to this event was it because they have a child diagnosed or a loved one was it because they're interested in the research side of it I didn't really get a clear answer on that because when you asked if they like found it from a university there was a few people and yeah. there were a couple people that said they have a loved one and then mm -hmm. what was the like main answer there it looked like it was just word of mouth like after that there okay. wasn't too many it looked like half the people kind of fell in those categories because there's one other one that i asked i can't remember what it was but then everybody else is word of mouth mm -hmm. um but yeah we didn't really finish that and we didn't take anything formally down um so from there though it went into what are some of the things that you struggle with in their community? I think one big one is that they're, they know that there's resources available, but they either don't make it down um, or to their country, or if they're just in uh, English or a language yep. that they can't interact with it. Um, so that was a little, that's annoying, like knowing that it's there. Yeah, um, especially because I didn't get to talk to everyone, but there's definitely some really brilliant people here. Mm -hmm. And to think about how much, like just that back and forth um, of information, right? So like how much we're missing out on that they could teach oh, us yeah, if yeah. we knew Portuguese. Uh -huh. And how much they're missing out on, not even necessarily learning per se, but like knowing about and then being able to expand upon that. Um, it's, it's really eye-opening to think about um, what gets lost when the languages are different. Yeah, so much so. And it makes sense why people don't want to interact with each other as much, just because there's so many barriers there. Um, so there was one gentleman out of the 70 that I've met before at a conference up in the States. Um, the majority of everybody is either, it's not like half of them were either from um, here in Recife, Joa, or Sao Paulo. Yeah, and yeah, then there were half, like little. But then everybody else was just completely all spread all over the, mm -hmm. all over the place. Um, so we ended up talking about how, kind of did a plug for like how, everybody in that room is motivated 
for the same reason. Like they're largely, uh, they're staying after a training and they're all here in a place because they have these shared values. So they're the ones that should keep talking and moving things forward. Um, Cause there's discussion as to whether or not certification needs to be a part of them and how yeah. they're going to handle that. And they have the same issues with regards to like ethics, training programs, scaling up, making sure it's a quality programs. So can I make a couple of observations that might be controversial or should sure. I save that for the controversial exchange? <laughs> yeah, you can make them. So these are just my thoughts. Like they're not real data points or anything. But one of the things that I noticed is in this training, everyone had, or at least seemed to have, a really deep understanding of our science. And that's kind of what I've heard about this area, even though none of them are BCBAs. Mm -hmm. So it really made me think more about the certification and what's being done to make sure that it's really about the science. And that's a fear that I've had for a really long time. Yeah. And right now, the two comparisons I have are like the United States, where there's tons of BCBAs versus like down here, there's not. And to see that stark difference where I've done so many of these trainings and this group seem to get everything so much better and they're not even board certified. And they, they were actively engaged not in even. learning. Yeah. yeah, not even. They were actively engaged and like really participating and Whereas like when I do a lot of the other trainings, it's like people just want to be spoon fed stuff. And I'm worried they're becoming too reliant on the certification and just like the, also, the programs and procedures piece. And it's, I don't know, it just yeah. made me think even more about that. And I think one devil's advocate point would be the culture um, between here and there is hard to say. Like it's hard to even say like what degree that impacts, I would expect it to. Um, so like, does our culture expect more of this spoon fed? Spoon fed. Spoon fed, <laughs> as opposed to here. I'm like using it all in air quotes, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone was very. There was so many notes being taken. Super eager. Yeah, no computers out. Everybody yeah. was present and the like computers, actively engaged. If the computers were up, they were. I checked, um, not purposely, but I was like seeing. Yeah like everybody's materials were just up and they were scrolling along and they were yeah. talking about things that yeah. you, were, yeah. you were talking about. So I know not all of that could yeah, be blamed on the certification, but I just feel like there was just, it seemed more of a true thirst and knowledge, or thirst for the knowledge of the science of behavior analysis yeah. and not, oh, here's this one year thing I can complete and like become a BCBA to you know achieve X outcome. It was, yeah. I like this science and I well, want was, to learn more about it. Yeah. But there was also some people that shared like that they were worried that inadequate training programs could create that sort of thing too. But we have that problem. Yeah, I think we could share lessons learned. I yeah, think the end I of think day. like a lot of the things they were concerned about were either already experiencing ourselves or um, we both were experiencing them. Like a lot yeah. of the things that they were concerned about, I have those same concerns. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The biggest one that I don't technically have is the language one, although now I want to be speak Portuguese to learn what they're talking about. Yeah, right. Um, so takeaways from that were there should be an ongoing discussion. They should be leading it, obviously. Um, hopefully that happens. Um, I shared just some quick things on how we started up the online group uh, VX Plus four or five years ago. I think the model starts off in a good place, but then you have a lot of refinement to do. Um, and they have the infrastructure to be able to meet online and talk and share these sort of things here with no problem. Yeah. Um, it's more so how do you battle the, the other social shit that goes down here. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, cool. So, yeah, that was, um, that ended on like an emotional note too. Of, They're in the restaurant, by the way. Of parents. Um, of some parents sharing their perspectives of like, this costs all the money they have just to show up and it's a something that they want to, that they're like really reliant on, yeah. right? Because yeah. other tools or teachings or whatever, or other behavior analysts aren't getting their child any farther than um, where they're at and they know that that's behind, usually right. significantly. Um, so, 
think that's the end of that one. We ended up going out and watching the Ohio State game. Oh, H-I-O. It was, uh, it was fun. It was a nail-biter game. I spent most of the time chatting through my handy-dandy app with all the locals. Um, or the folks that we're with. It's awesome. I love that we can like chat back and forth. I taught them OHIO and they we were losing a lot and they kept wanting to do the cheer and they were like, we want to do the cheer. And I was like, so do I. <laughs> but we won. So yay. Um, yeah, a couple of them asked me what was my favorite part compared or how does some of the facts, like how does it compare to America yeah. and other places? I would say uh, most places you go, you can find really kind people. Brazil is no different. Such kind, awesome people. Yeah. Um, so, we'll have to see what else is going to be in store for the future in Brazil. I know there's already talks happening. Yep. Which is cool. Um, that's the update. Tomorrow is peak day two, and we will update on that, and then we're on the road again back to Fort Lauderdale. Yep. Somewhat sad about that. <laughs> Excited to get back, but also bittersweet. I know, yeah. it always is. All right, we'll catch you all later. Bye. Bye. Very, very cool. <laughs>